Welcome to the MindsDB product training. During this session, we'll introduce what is MindsDB and how it leverages in database machine learning capabilities. After that, we'll proceed to the live demo examples. MindsDB is a data-centric AI middleware. It is an open source platform that enables developers to create AI-powered applications fast. MindsDB adds an AI layer on top of any database. It uses the concept of AI tables that differ from standard tables in that they can generate data upon being queried from the underlying model and data. Let's look at a simple example to better understand what is an AI table. Here, we've got an income table that stores people's income and debt data. The available data points are presented in this diagram. If we query for a debt value associated with the income of 80,000, we get 25,100, as this data point is available in the income table. However, if we query for a debt value associated with the income of 90,000, which is not present in the income table, then we get an empty set. Here comes the solution offered by MindsDB. We create a model that is fitted to the income tables data as shown in the diagram. We use the custom create model statements statement that includes the from clause to define the training data. Here we use the income table and the predict clause to define the column to be predicted. Here it is debt. The debt model is our AI table. Now we can query the AI table for a debt value associated with an arbitrary income value and we'll get an approximated debt value for any income value as presented in the diagram. Here we select income, debt and predicted debt from our debt model from our AI table and we want debt value where income is 90,120. We get an approximated debt value of 28,010 as presented in the diagram. Now that the concept of AI tables is clear, let's talk about MindsDB's architecture. MindsDB interacts with various data sources, ML frameworks, applications, and other, other developer tools. We provide over 70 data handlers that let you connect your data source to MindsDB. This could include any relational or non-relational databases, data streams, and data warehouses, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, or Snowflake. Once you connect your data source to MindsDB, you can use your data to train a machine learning model. We provide over 10 ML handlers or ML engines that let you create a model to accomplish different tasks, such as sentiment analysis, text summarization, spam detection, or automated chatbots. You can create a model using one of the available engines, including OpenAI, Hugging Face, or Nexla. So once you create a model using one of the available ML engines and train your model using data from one of the connected data sources, you can then make predictions and feed them into your application. MindsDB connects to applications and developer tools using SQL or NoSQL syntax or via REST API endpoints. We'll talk about it in detail later on. Now let's look at the available resources that help you learn and use MindsDB. One of the essential resources is MindsDB documentation. Uh, there you can find step-by-step -step instructions on how to use and troubleshoot MindsDB. Let's look at the available sections. Here you can learn how to deploy MindsDB and how to use MindsDB SQL and NoSQL syntax. We've also got REST API endpoints and SDKs 
docs. You can view all the available data sources, including applications and databases, and the available ML engines. A good place to start is the use cases section that uh, has many tutorials that you can follow to learn more about MindsDB. You've also got section on how to contribute to MindsDB. Another resource is the MindsDB Slack community. It is a place where users and contributors interact with the core MindsDB team. Here, you can ask questions in the questions channel or get announcements about ongoing competitions and hackathons in the announcements channel or just introduce yourselves. As MindsDB is an open source platform, we store our codes in the GitHub repository. Let's have a look there. Besides viewing our codes here, you can contribute to MindsDB by resolving one of the open issues labeled as help wanted, or you can create a new issue to report a bug, request a feature, or improve our docs, or there are other options as well. Now let's look at the deployment options. You can deploy MindsDB locally via pip or docker. In the deployment section, you will find instructions on how to deploy MindsDB. It's the so-called self-hosted. You can use either docker or pip on different operating systems. Another way is to use MindsDB Cloud. It doesn't require any installation. You just need to create an account at cloudmindsdb.com to access the editor. And the instructions on how to do it are available in the deployment options as well under MindsDB Cloud. There are available demo, starter, and pro versions. We also offer MindsDB Pro, which is a paid version that includes managed instances for greater security and scalability. You can find more information on MindsDB Pro by going to Upgrade to Pro in your MindsDB Cloud Editor. Here are all the features listed for each of the options. Now, Let's talk about how to connect MindsDB to different applications and developer tools. Besides using uh, our MindsDB Cloud Editor, you can connect MindsDB to different SQL clients. In the docs, you will find instructions in the MindsDB SQL uh, section, connect to MindsDB. And there are instructions to connect to DBeaver, SQL Alchemy, Tableau, Jupyter Notebooks, and more. You can also connect to NoSQL clients such as Mongo Compass or Shell, as MindsDB provides the NoSQL syntax as well. You will find instructions in the docs under MindsDB NoSQL section, connect to MindsDB. You can utilize the REST API endpoints to interact with MindsDB. Here, we've got endpoints to work with databases, projects, models, views, and tables. And to build exciting web apps with MindsDB, you can check out our JavaScript SDK. We offer currently JavaScript and Python SDKs, so you can access MindsDB from these uh, programming languages. As we've seen in the architecture diagram before, uh, MindsDB integrates with different data sources and ML engines. We distinguish uh, three types of integrations, data, ML framework and application integrations. It can be found in the docs in the data sources and ML engine sections. 
data integrations or data sources include databases, data warehouses, and also applications. These provide data used to train the models. And ML engines are used to create models. And by default, MindsDB uses the Lightwood engine, but you can change the engine with the using clause as it will be presented later on during the demo. So here you can view all available data sources and ML engines of different categories. Here are some of the data sources that can be connected to MindsDB. And this include MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, and a lot more. Now, let's move on to the demo examples. First, we'll show you how to analyze text sentiment using one of the OpenAI models. Let's go to our cloud editor. Here, we are going to use our MySQL demo database. So we need to connect this database first using the create database statement. We use the engine as MySQL and set of required parameters. You can find uh, the details of how to connect to this database in one of the Learning Hub tutorials. Once we connected our database, we are going to use the Amazon reviews table. This table stores product name and the reviews. We are going to create a model that will analyze the reviews and assign sentiment, either positive, neutral, or negative. To create a model, we use the create model statement, give it a name. Please note that in the case of OpenAI models, we are skipping the from clause that would normally be at this place. It is because this OpenAI model that we use is a pre-trained model, so we do not need to provide data to train it. Next, we use the uh, pr uh, predict clause to define that we want to predict the sentiment value. And in the using clause, we define a set of parameters. One of them is engine. Here we use the OpenAI engine model name. We use the GPT-4 model, which is one of the latest OpenAI models, and prompt template, which is a message to the model. Here we instruct the model to describe the sentiment of the reviews strictly as positive, neutral, or negative. It is good practice to give some examples. And then we define the variable, review variable, within double curly braces that stores the uh, review to be analyzed by the model. Once we create the model using this uh, piece of code, we can query the models table to check its status. The model is complete, so we can proceed to make predictions. We select the review, which is provided in the where clause, and the sentiment from the uh, model table, from our AI table. Here, the model is going to analyze this review. Let's see. Okay, so this review is neutral. Now, let's do something more advanced by uh, making the batch predictions. To make uh, multiple predictions at once for the entire table, we have to join our data table here, Amazon reviews, with the AI table. And we select the review value from our data table and the sentiment as predicted by the AI table. So here we've got the result. 
the first review says that somebody is very happy with uh, with a product so the model assigns sentiment as positive then for the other that is neutral positive and negative Okay, you can see more examples of using OpenAI models in our docs, either in OpenAI or in the use cases, natural language processing examples with OpenAI. Now let's move on to another example of time series model we are going to uh, predict the, uh, we are going to forecast monthly expenditures of different categories for the upcoming months. While using the stats forecast engine, we need to uh, create it in the cloud account using the create ML engine statement. And then we can verify it using the show ML engines. And we see the stats forecast is here. So we can go ahead and use it. Again, we use our sample MySQL database. And this time we use the historical expenditures table that stores a month category and expenditure amount. It stores data from 1982 up to 2017 September. Again, we use the uh, create model statement to create the quarterly expenditure forecaster model. Here, uh, we use the from close to train our model using the historical expenditures table. Next, we define the uh, what column should be predicted. Here, it is the expenditure column. And in the case of time series model, uh, we need to use the order by close that orders our data um, chronologically. Here, we use the month column. Optionally, we can group our data. Here, we would use the category column to group our expenditures into categories such as food uh, or industry or clothing. And uh, we use the horizon clause to define for how many uh, future months we want to make predictions. So here the rows are, uh, the frequency of rows is on the monthly basis. So uh, we, the horizon three says that we are going to make predictions for the future three rows, for the future three months. Again, we use the uh, using close define engine as stats forecast. So once we create the model, we can check its status by querying it from the model table. The status is complete, so we can use it to make predictions. Here, we select both month and expenditure from our AI table and we join it with the data table. And then in the where clause, we specify that mon month should be greater than latest. Latest is a custom MindsDB keyword that defines that we are going to make predictions for the upcoming months looking from the data set point of view. So for example, we've seen that our historical expenditures table stores uh, expenditures up to September, 2017. So we are going to make predictions for October, November, and December of 2017. And we chose to make predictions for the food category. Here it is. We've got months as expected, 2017, October, November, and December, and the forecasted expenditure values. You can find both of these examples, OpenAI and Stats Forecast, in our Learning Hub tutorials to follow it on your own. Also, you can find the Stats Forecast engine under ML Engine section, Stats Forecast.
If you have any questions or feedback, we encourage you to join our Slack community. The link is available on our doc page right here. Thank you very much.